In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel came to St. Simon Stock to give him a garment, the way Elijah gave his garment to Elisha. This garment gave a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Since everything in Scripture points to our Lord and Our Lady, can we not say those who receive the garment of Our Lady receive a double portion from her? But this is more than a garment, for it is garment that marks us as her property. Those who wear it are branded as hers. St. Alphonsus tells us so. He says, just as men take pride in having others wear their livery, so the, the most holy Mary is pleased when her servants wear her scapular as a mark that they have dedicated themselves to her service and are members of the family of the Mother of God. St. Alphonsus uses a very specific word, livery. A livery is not only a garment, but a uniform worn by a servant or official. A livery always has an identifying design that designates ownership or affiliation. The identifying design of the brown scapular, one piece of wool hanging on the chest and the other on the back joined by cords. The word itself comes the fr from the French livre, meaning dispensed or handed over. Most often it would indicate that the wearer of the livery was a servant, dependent, follower, or friend of the owner of the livery, or in the case of objects, that the object belonged to them. Think about this. Those that wear the scapular belong to Our Lady and are dispensed for her service. They are sent out marked by the sign of ownership. Now those of you who have consecrated yourselves to Our Lady might hear something familiar here. Perhaps you recall this terminology used in the consecration prayer that you said on the special Marian feast day when you gave yourself over to her care. Perhaps you said these words, O Mary, my mother, I give myself totally to you as your possession and property. This is the language of consecration. St. Louis de Montfort explains that this consists in giving ourselves to Mary, voluntarily, lovingly, and without constraint, entirely, and without reserve. Our body and soul, all our exterior property, and also all of our interior and spiritual possessions, such as our merits, graces, acts of penance, and virtues. This is ownership, whole and entire. And those who are owned by her wear her livery. This livery, uniform or badge, is the brown scapular. Popes have confirmed this. In 1950, Pope Pius XII in his letter commemorating the seventh centenary of the brown scapular, wrote the well-known words concerning the scapular. May it be to them a sign of their consecration to the most sacred heart of the Immaculate Virgin, which in recent times we have so strongly recommended. Sister Lucia, the last remaining seer of Fatima, reiterated this later that same year to a Carmelite priest, Father Howard Rafferty, who came to visit her from the United States. When he asked her if Our Lady requested us to wear the scapular, she, re she responded, she wants everyone to wear the scapular because it is a sign of our consecration to her Immaculate Heart. Lucia was so sure of this because it was during the greatest public miracle since perhaps the parting of the Red Sea on October 13, 1917, 
when 70,000 people witnessed the sun come down from the heavens and appear to fall to the earth. Lucia saw in the sky Our Lady of Mount Carmel holding out the scapular, repeating the same gesture she made to Simon Stock as to give it to her and to us. How significant this is. Heaven and Our Lady do nothing by accident. During this great solar event, which was seen miles away, written about in newspapers, and confirmed by the Church to be an authentic miracle by the highest authorities, here Our Lady chose to come, and once again to give us the scapular. The significance of this cannot be understated. Our Lady said that nations would be annihilated, and that the world is facing an unprecedented chastisement due to sin. She told Lucia that she desired her, the last of the children, to remain on earth, to establish devotion to her Immaculate Heart, in order to save us from what's to come. Our Lord told Lucia that he wanted to place devotion to his mother's Immaculate Heart alongside his heart. But how did he want to do this? We saw in the 17th century, our Lord had a very specific plan to establish devotion to the Sacred Heart in all the kingdoms of Europe. He told St. Margaret Mary that he desired to reign in the palaces. His specific request was for the French kings to consecrate themselves and to place the emblem of the Sacred Heart on the flag. But they did not do so, and because of it, they and the world suffered and still continues to suffer under the effects of that refusal. God does not change. And so in his desire to have the whole world devoted to his mother's immaculate heart, he must have a specific request of us. And this is precisely what Lucia was asked in 1946, four years prior to her meeting with Father Rafferty. She was asked, what exactly do we need to do to bring about the promise to defeat of the church's enemies and to put an end to the current chastisement? World War II had just ended and the Bishop of Fatima wanted to know definitively what we needed to do so as not to repeat the same fate as the kings of France. Sister Lucia gave the answer, this answer is still the answer that remains today. It was approved by the, the Bishop of Fatima immediately and promulgated from him directly. It was approved by the Holy See and remains the Holy See's approved plan. We are to pray the rosary every day, accept and offer up our suffering and our daily duties according to our state of life consecrate ourselves to Our Lady and wear the brown scapular as a sign of our consecration. Later, the five first Saturdays was added to this plan and approved by Lucia as well. When enough people do these things, we will experience the promised period of peace in the world. This is the church's official position it comes directly from the seer herself, who is also a prophet. And we're told in scripture, do not despise prophecy. But it was not the first time these two sacramentals had appeared in a prophetic statement. In the 13th century, St. Dominic prophesied to another Carmelite, Brother Angelus, this now very fa famous statement. One day, through the rosary and the scapular, the Most Holy Virgin will save the world. Two men given two sacramentals at almost the same time, in the same century. This timing is not an accident. It's a message, 
a message sent from eight centuries ago. Do not despise prophecy, as St. Paul says. It would appear that the time has come for this prophecy of St. Dominic to be fulfilled. The rosary and the scapular are the two sacramentals that are part of the church's official response to Fatima. They are non-negotiables. When asked by Father Rafferty in 1950, if someone chose not to wear the scapular, could they fulfill the message of Fatima? Lucia responded emphatically, no, they could not fulfill the message. Less than two decades later, during the Second Vatican Council, there was a big discussion to include the rosary and the scapular in the council documents. The decision was made to defer to the Pope to decide which sacramentals were the most important. Then in 1965, before the council had closed, Pope St. Paul VI wrote these words, ever holding great esteem the practices and exercises of devotion to the Most Blessed Virgin, which have been recommended for centuries by the magisterium of the Church. Among them we judge well to recall, especially the Marian Rosary and the religious use of the scapular of Mount Carmel. If through the rosary and the scapular, Our Lady will save the world, then we must ask ourselves, how many Catholics wear the scapular? How many even know about it? If the world is going to be saved from this present darkness by Our Lady through these two sacramentals, then awareness and wearing the brown scapular as a sign of consecration to Our Lady has a long way to go to catch up to the awareness and praying of the rosary. The brown scapular then would appear to be the missing link and why we're still awaiting the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. When Father Rafferty asked Sister Lucia, which is more important, the saying of the daily rosary or the wearing of the brown scapular as a sign of consecration, Sister Lucia said, Father, the rosary and the scapular are inseparable. You cannot have one without the other. Is it any wonder then why the devil wars against the scapular so much? It would appear then that we're up against what is the greatest resistance from hell against a single object of devotion greater right now than even the rosary, since the devil knows so many people are aware of it and already pray it. But if the devil can keep the scapular in a place of obscurity, then we'll always be missing one of the indispensable components to the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. Therefore, the brown scapular is the single most important object of devotion to spread globally at this present time. It will stop the advance of this present darkness and save countless souls, snatching them from the devil's fingers, as the devil himself told Venerable Francis Yepes when his brown scapular fell off, who said, take that scapular off, which snatches so many souls away from us. St. Alphonsus affirms that the Blessed Virgin Mary gives the assurance of the supreme grace of final perseverance to all who worthily wear her little habit. He says, For those who wear her scapular profess to belong to Our Lady. It is impossible that a servant of Mary be damned, provided he serves her faithfully and commends himself to her maternal protection. In this way, we become her little sheep, and as her sheep, we wear the sheep's clothing, the wool of the brown scapular. But the sheep of Our Lady are also fierce as lions, 
because they are made by Our Lady into the image of her Son. Yes, this livery is a uniform, a soldier's uniform. And soldiers never go into battle without armor and weapons. St. Louis de Montfort prophesied all the way back in the 17th century that this will happen, especially towards the end of the world, and indeed soon, because Almighty God and his mother are to raise up great saints who will surpass in holiness most other saints. He says, these great souls will be exceptionally devoted to the Blessed Virgin. They will fight with one hand and build with the other. The enormity of the Fatima apparitions and messages would indicate to us that this time is at hand. It's no doubt that these great souls, which very well may be you and I, will be armed with the rosary and clothed with the protection of the scapular. Pope Benedict XV, who was the Pope while Mary was appearing at Fatima, gave the command to all her soldiers when he said, let all of you have a common language and a common armor. The language, the words of the gospel. The armor, the scapular of the Virgin of Carmel. The rosary is, at its core, the meditation on the common language of the gospel, the word of God, which the epistle to the Hebrews states, is sharper than a two-edged sword. Lucia said that these two sacramentals are given to us so that we may accomplish the main message of Fatima, to sanctify our lives and to accept all that God allows us to suffer for the salvation of souls. The world has gotten so bad that it will take nothing less than an army of great saints to turn back the tide. And the saints of these times will not be able to accomplish what is necessary without the rosary and the brown scapular. Just like all great soldiers in battle need the best sword and a shield. But with the great knights of old, they needed to be exceedingly virtuous. In Divine Intimacy we read, Those who wish to live truly devoted to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, must follow Mary into the depths of the interior life. This garment then is not to be a mere external sign. No, the soul clothed in Our Lady's garment, in her livery, must conform themselves to be like her in the deepest depths of the soul and attain all her virtues. This uniform which Our Lady gives to all who are hers means we are expected to be more and more like her at every step, and thus more and more like her Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.